Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about memory usage in Spring Boot applications. You can turn on the actuator uh, if, if you're at the actuator endpoint. That is one way to actually get the current uh, memory consumption and also the all of the memory settings uh, for, for your Java JVM. But there's also another way, a very pragmatic way that I will show you also, because you can use the runtime library. So, and that's what we're going to do tonight. We're using the runtime library to create a REST controller that will then expose the memory usage uh, as JSON. So yes, so let us just get right, right into it. This is my HTTP uh, interfaces uh, project that I have right here. This uses uh, HTTP interfaces. We are not going to use any of those for uh, for, 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 for this REST controller, because we will just use a browser to uh, to actually get the information. But uh, I have uh, I've enabled security on this project right here. That means that I have a other, an other endpoint right here where I permit all. So that means that then I don't have to think about security if I if my REST controller starts with other. So that is what we're going to do tonight uh, with the memory REST controller that we're going to create now. So here we will say, here create new package. Then we'll say memory. And here we'll, we will create our memory risk controller, memory risk controller. And of course, one of the, the use cases for this is if, if, if your application crashes because it uh, runs out of memory, it can happen if you plug in too many things in Spring Boot. If you try to embed, uh, if you try to run embedded a uh, lot of weird stuff, then suddenly then you're out of memory. That could be, uh, yeah, that, that could be, for instance, uh, rapid embedded uh, Kafka, for instance. Uh, you can also run some uh, some large caches that could also eat up all of the memory. Um, so it could be nice to actually get an overview of uh, yeah, what is the current memory situation. And this is exactly what we are going to get with. Of course, uh, the, the solution to the problem with the uh, out of memory is either to remove some of the embedded uh, the embedded plugins that you have uh, added to your Spring Boot application, and then use, the, a, for instance, a real Kafka server instead of an embedded Kafka, or, or, or use uh, a, maybe a, a standalone Redis cache instead of using an internal cache uh, for yeah for whatever uh, you have in that cache. Uh, so, so, so try to tr uh, to take things out of your Spring Boot application. That is one solution. Another solution is to change the memory settings when you. When you start up your application, when you start your application, then you can actually set some memory uh, uh, settings there. You can set so you can set the initial heap size. You can also set the maximum uh, the ma maximum heap size. Um, so yeah, just so and just experiment with it. That's that's usually how to to actually solve it. Try to experiment and then uh, and then try to see uh, yeah whether that works or not. And this is also why it's important to actually have monitoring on your uh, Spring Boot applications. If you use the cloud, then it's very easy to monitor it. Um, if you use a Kubernetes cluster, for instance, then it, uh, then you also yeah you you always you always need monitoring, of course. Uh, and there are a lot of tools for that. I'll not dig in. I'll not uh, get down that uh, lane today. Um, so let us create this memory risk controller right here. We will. We will return a memory memory statistics stats object right here. We have not created that yet. And we'll say get memory, get memory stats, stats like this. And yes, create the class, create the class. Yes, in the same package. Yes, thank you very much. I'm using Lumpbox, so I'm going to annotate with data and no arcs constructor and all arcs constructor. So now we have a lot of constructors. And here, then we have then we say private, and then we can say heap and um, private long heap space. Um, actually, let, let us create a public static method on this one right here. Um, do the, of course, the implementation can be done a lot of different ways. I'm going to use a public static uh, create um, like this, and then we will say memory stats. Like this, and then we will say return new memory stats. And since we all we have all of the arguments, then uh, we can actually place them there. But okay, so what we want to do is we want to use the runtime library. So there's a runtime library, runtime that gets runtime that. Uh, and here, here we have it. So here we have um, we have free memory. We have uh, maximum memory. We have total memory. So with the, those are the numbers that we actually want to expose. Then we also have uh, available 
old processors that's in the, yeah uh, it's a number of cpus that we can use so that is um that is also quite cool so let us we have maximum memory that's one let us just see how many we actually have then we have the free memory and we also have the total memory so we have the usage the, me the free memory and we have maximum memory okay so those are actually the ones that we want to create as um, uh, so we want max memory like this and we want free memory free memory and we want total memory so those are the fields that we want so then we say yeah new and then we place all of these values right here and we actually also want number of processors and processors that is an integer i remember that one yeah and we say processors like this and then we say available processors yes here and yeah i think this is it actually so this means that now we have a static method where we can create and fill up the memory stats for from the runtime library look where we where, look where it comes from it comes from uh yeah it comes from the java lang uh, so that is why we have, have we don't have any imports of course when it's from the java lang package which is right there so that is the default package so now we have memory stats right here and then we can say return memory stats dot create so it's a it's a it's a very short get mapping it's a very short resting point that we have right here we need we know we need to start with other because then i can then I, there's no security on this endpoint right here and then we can say memory um yeah, just memory yeah let us just keep it to that so other memory and uh, let us start up our application and see what actually happens right here all configurations here we have the application of course i could also have created a test actually just to to, to trigger this the reason why i want to create a rest controller could also be that you actually have a client in front of your spring boot application maybe you have an angular or view or react application in front and then um then you want to show the, your memory consumption the backend memory consumption in your client on some kind of uh, maybe you have a utility page or a a, a maintenance page uh, yeah for, for administrators uh, then then you want to show that then this could be the way that you actually uh, provide this information for the gui clients um so now it should have been started so we will go to localhost 8080 other and memory memory here's the memory so this is in bytes if you want to convert it to a megabyte then you i think you can just divide by 10 24 a couple of times but uh, if you're down on how to convert convert uh, these bytes into convert bytes into megabytes you can just ask google right as usual so this is uh okay so it is actually just by 1000 and then another thousand right there so that is uh, just dividing by um one million then we get the megabytes of course so yeah so that means that uh, that's actually four gigabyte of maximum memory right here and uh, we can do the same with the free memory how much free memory do I have when I have started up my application? Let us see. I got 83 megabyte of free memory, but that is also because it actually takes, uh, can actually uh, extend the, the amount of memory on the fly. So let me say copy. And again, here we can see this is 120 megabyte. So they, it uses 120 megabytes just on the startup. Of course, this um, this this footprint can be uh, made, uh, made made smaller if you, you compile it for the native system. So that's a if you use a native compiler. 
Um, I made a video, another video about that. You can or you can see that if you want to. Uh, it, it's quite interesting. That then you just need to. You cannot use reflection uh, if you use ahead of time compilation. Um, yeah. So this is actually it. We can also create a test for it. If uh, if you want to create a test, then you just press Alt Enter after placing the cursor in the end of the in, on, on the end of the class name. And then you tick off what you want to test. I want to test get memory stats. Yes, add. Um, you still need to auto wire the memory rest controller like this. And then we can say memory rest controller dot get memory stats. And then we can assert something. Assertions dot assert not null. Not null is always a good start at least to assert something. Dot this uh, get. Yeah, get total memory, get processors, yes, get free memory, get total memory, get max memory, and get the get the number of processors, available processors. If you do not assert anything, then it's not a test you made, then it's just some code that is running. And we need to annotate this with add spring boot test right here. And let us stop or Stop the application. There is one more tip. If you want to create a, a test that is fast, then you can actually say right here, web environment, and then you can actually write none right here because we do not need the web environment because we we just use this the we're just using the Spring context. Then we use the memory controller and then we call it directly. We don't have to go to the the web server every time uh, to see that the JSON knows how to convert. Objects into JSON, right? We, we don't want to. We don't want to waste. Uh, we don't want to waste energy on that. Um, so we can just keep the web environment to none. Then we also then we don't take up any port, and we also have we have uh, type safe checks right here instead of uh, checking JSON. Uh, yeah. So let us run the tests. Oh, there was an error. No qualifying bean of yeah, that is because of the security. That is because of the security. Yeah, that's because I uh, maybe it's locking actually uh, on certified security config. I think I know why it gives me this is because um it is a piece security why does it uh, why does it do that we don't we don't need the web environment okay what happens if we add the random ports I need to look into that. It's, I, I've created some extensions to the logging system that actually uses the security uh, system, and I think that's actually what um, what actually generates this. But uh, the test screen and it's actually quite fast, even though that we have a web environment with a random port. Um, the cool thing about choosing a random port, then you can actually have your application running while you are uh, running your tests. Also, I just want to show this little to the trick right here. If you want to enable um, the actuator. Um, I've made another video about actuator, but uh, if you want to enable that, it's quite easy. Even though that you have an existing project, then you can just go to start spring.io. Then you find uh, then yeah. If you use Maven, if you use Gradle, just choose, choose Gradle, of course. But if you use Maven uh, like I do, then you just uh, tick off um, uh, Maven, and then you would say uh, dep add dependency right here. Then you add actuator, uh, Spring Boot actuator right here. And then you say explore, then you press explore because then you can see the pump file and you go down to and find the Spring Boot Starter actuator right there. Copy that part, go back to your project and find your, okay, it's actually, I'm actually using Gradle, sorry. Uh, let me just go back. I'm actually, it's, it's a bit different. It depends on which project that I'm uh, dealing with. So let me just close this. I'll choose Gradle Groovy. This, that's one, uh, that's one I'm using right now. Oh, it's a Kotlin. Oh, it is. It is good. Yes. And here we have the actuator. 
copy, add the actuator. It has actually I've, I'm I'm already using the actuator actually. So we should actually just look for the. Um, we can actually go to to slash actuator and then we can actually see what is exposed right there. Um, so yeah, let us just do that just for fun. So now I start up my application again and then we go to localhost port 8080 and then we go to actuator right there. Now I have to log in and the name is Mike and then kiss me. And now we actually get the endpoints that we can use. We can actuate actually health and actual health path. Okay, uh, and in, in if you read the documentation, then we can actually enable a lot of actuator endpoints so we can actually get the, um, so we can actually get, show memory usage, yes. Uh, metrics, so we can actually get some metrics, right? So this is actually what we want. We want to show the metrics and we need to enable those, met we need to enable that. And the way we do that is, to um yeah so we have the metrics right there we will need to enable the metrics and we need to do that in the configuration file so if i go to my application configuration file right here then i can say actuator actuator stat uh, metrics metrics management there's something with management and uh, actuator I forgot what it is right now. I'll I'll look it up for for another time. I think um, I've I've actually made a video where it, it is, but I've I've forgotten the exact I've forgotten the exact um, exact property. So spring metrics exports keys metric blah blah. Um, okay, I'll not bore you with that uh, right now, but uh, thank you very, very much for watching. It is, it is possible with Actuator uh, to see the memory usage, but uh, if you want to have a, you can just use the runtime library just like you saw now. Thank you very much for all of your, all of your nice comments and um, hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.